Can I use my US MSDS in Europe or Canada? Welcome to another installment of Nextreg on Compliance. My name is Mike Moffat. I'm the Director of Communications here at Nextreg. Often we get asked by clients, they'll have, the clients will have a uh, MSDS that they're using in the United States for a product. They're going to be shipping that product and selling that product in, say, England or Spain or Australia or someplace else. They want to know if they can continue to use a, that MSDS in those countries. The short answer is no, you, you can't. You can't simply take a US MSDS and use it in Europe. And the reason is that MSDSs need to be authored to be compliant in the jurisdictions which they're being used. So in the U U.S., you know, it has to be compliant with 29 CFR 1910, Canada with the WIMIS system, and in the EU with the new CLP system. The, that's the new system based on GHS. So short answer is no, you, no, you can't. But that always leads to a follow-up question. They say, okay, well, I understand that I can't simply use my American MSDS in England or just take my... American MSDS, translate it into Swedish and use it in Sweden. I understand I can't do that. But what, can I author a single MSDS that will be compliant in multiple countries? So I can have one MSDS that I can use in both the United States and New Zealand, or I can use in both the United States and Canada. The answer to that is, well, it depends. It depends because we break regulations down into two categories. First category being compatible regulations. This isn't suggesting that regulations are the same, but it's, what it's suggesting is that there's no big contradictions between the two. There's no major differences in layout and that sort of thing. And incompatible regulations, where there are a fair, fair number of contradictions or differences in layout, as such, you can't comply with both at the same time. So as an example, take US and Canada. Now, 29 CFR and WIMIS are a great deal different from each other. But they're compatible in the sense that they don't contradict each other. There's no contradictions in classifications or layouts or that sort of thing. So you can author an MSDS to be compliant in both jurisdictions. Canada, uh, Nextreg does this for our clients as well as you know, other MSDS authoring firms offer the same service of a US-Canada jointly compliant MSDS or even a US-Canada-Mexico. All three would be considered compatible. So yes, this is something that we recommend that clients can do. Um, an example of incompatible would be the EU and Canada. These systems are just, uh, uh, regulations are just too different from each other. There's, there's too many contradictions, there's uh, too many differences in layouts to be able to author an MSDS that's compliant in both countries. Companies try, both M a few MSDS authoring companies try, not, not very many, but a lot of people doing MSDSs on their own try you know, do try and do this, it's something that we would highly recommend against. It's really impossible to make an MSDS that's compliant in both jurisdictions. So we really recommend you not try because it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. And to give you an example of why it doesn't work, let's consider the classification uh, for about my favorite substance on the earth, caffeine. Um, this discussion uh, of caffeine, we actually took this from a Merck presentation and the PowerPoint slides for that presentation are available online. If you'd like a copy of them, just uh, send me an email, info, info at nextreg.com and I'd be happy to email the link to you. Okay, so let's consider the classification for caffeine. So we have nine major jurisdictions that a lot of com companies operate in, Australia, Canada and so on. And you'll note that the classifications are a great deal different. That in Australia, EU, and Malaysia, the classification for caffeine, like a pure 100% caffeine, would be harmful. Whereas in Canada, Japan, the United States, it'd be considered toxic. You might be thinking at this point, well, it seems like a difference in nomenclature, but really what's the difference between harmful and toxic? Okay, well, let's continue. In... Um, India, caffeine on an MSDS should be classified as non-toxic. Well, this is a direct, a, a direct contradiction of the United States, Canada, and Japan, which is toxic. So if you try to author an MSDS to be compliant in both countries, you'd say, well, this is both a toxic and a non-toxic substance. Really doesn't make any sense. And like all your statements are um, going to contradict each other. It's not going to work. You can't get a compliant document. Similarly, consider China, where 
caffeine has a classification of not, not hazardous, whereas New Zealand it has a classification of hazardous. Again, big contradiction between the two. You can't, you can't square that circle. There's no way of getting around this. So, you know, if we look at this list, we have nine countries, and we have one, two, three, four, five different classifications for the exact same substance. So this was actually the impetus, not caffeine in particular, but this idea of differences in classification was the impetus for GHS, or the globally harmonized system. And the idea of the globally harmonized system is that you'll have a harmonized set of classifications and a harmonized set of MSDS or SDS layouts um, so we can get rid of this problem. And for the most part, that's starting to work so a follow-up question would be, okay, well, once we have GHS everywhere, can we have an MS, can we have a single MSDS as compliant everywhere? Well, it turns out that you can't. And to, to learn more about why, you'll have to see Nexreg's video on the matter. So if you have any questions, if you have any um, questions you'd like to see in, uh, in another one of these presentations, please send them my way to info, I-N-F-O, and nexreg.com. As, as well, if you'd like to see our GHS video, send me an email and I'll send you the link. Take care. This presentation and all the information contained herein is not intended to replace or be used in place of the judgment of a qualified regulatory compliance professional. Regulations and interpretations of regulations can change rapidly, so please consult a qualified regulatory compliance professional before starting any project.